Hi, it's Bill Weemoth from HistoryHighlights.com, sending you out all the best on this July the 20th. For today's little bit of history, uh, we're going to go to the Library of Congress website and talk about a fun one, Lucy the Elephant and other bizarre roadside attractions. It was on this day, July the 20th, back in 1970, that the six-story, tin-clad novelty building known as Lucy the Elephant was moved two blocks down the street to its current location in Margate, New Jersey. At 65 feet tall and weighing 90 tons, Lucy is both a rare survivor of a Victorian-era architectural folly and an early prototype for a class of structures known as roadside architecture that flourished in the 20th century with the invention of the automobile. The building's dramatic rescue and restoration by Margate's volunteer-driven Save Lucy Committee is a significant historic preservation success story. Lucy the Elephant started life in 1881 as the Elephant Bazaar, soon Elephant Hotel, built by Philadelphia real estate developer James V. Lafferty to lure buyers to what was then called South Atlantic City. Visitors arrived by train. Lafferty, who earned a U.S. patent for his unique design idea in 1882, was soon involved with two additional seaside elephant buildings that do not survive. The much larger 1885 Elephantine Colossus, also confusingly known as both the Elephant Hotel and the Elephant Bazaar, that he built in Coney Island, New York, which at 122 feet was almost twice as tall as Lucy, and the smaller Light of Asia built in Cape May, New Jersey in 1886. Coney Island's elephant burned down in a fire in 1896 while Cape May's was torn down in 1900, but Lucy, who earned her nickname sometime around 1900, survived because when Laverty's real estate development languished, he sold her to an area resident who kept the structure as a tourist attraction while adding to the site a Turkish-style pavilion that had originally been part of the 1876 Centennial Exposition. Roadside sculpture and architecture, as well as signage, captured the eye of Farm Security Administration photographers who traveled the United States in the 1930s documenting Depression-era living conditions and the library's extensive collection of Farm Security Administration Office of War Information black and white negatives include many examples, such as folk art, sculptures in New Mexico, teepee-shaped tourist cabins in Kentucky, a derrick-fronted roadside stand in Oklahoma, a pig-shaped barbecue joint in Texas, an ice cream shop shaped like a carry-out container in Pennsylvania, and an oversized Paul Bunyan monument in Minnesota. Now, while Lucy wasn't photographed by the Farm Security Administration, the Margate Elephant was documented more recently by another Depression-era project that is ongoing, the Historic American Buildings Survey, HABS. The survey of Lucy includes before and after restoration photographs and measured architectural drawings. Some HABS surveys also incorporate written histories. Other roadside arch architecture documented by HABS includes a milk can, a milk bottle, a wine bottle, a dinosaur, the clam box restaurant, Mammy's Cupboard inspired by Gone with the Wind, the Bedford, Pennsylvania coffee pot, built in 1927, was both photographed for the FSA by Esther Bubbly in 1943 and documented by HABS in 1999. More recently, and among many other structures, photographer John Margulies captured additional coffee pot-shaped buildings in color in Tacoma, Washington, and Lexington, Virginia. In her 1984 book, The Colossus of Rhodes, Myth and Symbol Along the American Highway, art historian Carol Ann Marling headed out in search of roadside giants that dot Minnesota's landscape, starting with Bemidji's quintessential 15-foot-high Paul Bunyan and Babe the Ox of 1937, the same one documented by FSA photographer John Vashon. Marling wrote, Marking the primary route heading west through town, the glossy red and blue figures invited the motorists to abandon the highway for Bemidji's first annual Paul Bunyan Winter Carnival. These crudely formed, garishly colored behemoths demanded attention by the sheer force of their intrusion upon the flat, white, wintertime landscape of Minnesota. In the early years, Paul Bunyan's arms could move with hidden wires while Babe was fully mobile, having been mounted on the frame of a Ford Model A. Oversized sculptures are not buildings, but their roadside novelty still draws our gaze on the road. 
John Margulies, who specialized in photogra photographing roadside attractions during a 40-year career, refers to sites like these as unnecessary places, though they nevertheless continue to fascinate, amuse, amaze, and draw us in as we travel the vast American landscape. As early as 1972, professional architects Robert Venturi, Denise Scott Brown, and Stephen Eisenhower's classic book, Learning from Las Vegas, used the influence of roadside architecture to develop what became the late 20th century's predominant architectural style, postmodernism. In their book, they argue that buildings take two forms, ducks and decorated sheds. A duck, named for the Long Island duck or big duck, that was photographed by Margulies in 1976, is shaped exactly like the thing that it is. While a decorated shed, such as Randy's Donuts, photographed by Margulies in 1991, is a generic box that can have any sort of words and icons stuck to it. This observation led to a complete departure from the early 20th century truism that form follows function so well known in the work of architects Louis Sullivan and those that followed, toward a style that instead separates form from function in significant ways. While it may seem a long way from roadside attractions like 1881's Lucy the Elephant to the Big Duck on Long Island to 1964's high-style Vanna Venturi House, or perhaps even 2003's Walt Disney Hall by famed architect Frank Gehry or the like, these buildings are all iconic structures that, through their visibility and influence, have helped to fundamentally change the shape of our environment. I hope you can get out and take a scenic drive and maybe see some bizarre sights in your region. Soak it up. Make the most of the day. I wish you all the best. Take care. I'll see you soon.